Hello everybody, Tim Kelly here with another little episode on my Master Photo Techniques channel. Today I want to talk to you about that potential and maybe rare impossible image. Uh, what I'm talking about in our case as portrait photographers is the giant group. Now we all know that there's photographers who specialize in ginormous grand families or they do reunions at the beach but I'm talking about somebody calling upon you, a studio photographer, to do something that is of your normal studio quality of 20, 25, 30, 40 people at one time. And uh, I've recently just done one and that's why it's fresh on my mind and I wanted to share it with you today. I'm gonna show you a group that originally came in and booked an outdoor session of a group of 24, including some small children. But when I was uh, making the arrangements and that client was in my studio, they saw something they really wanted, which was a lighter toned image on my Kelly Beige background. And uh, suddenly that's the only way it was gonna be. And there was a head count of 24. So what I had to devise was a way to get the job accomplished to their satisfaction and mine. And I'm gonna show you the image now and talk a little bit about it. So here is the image that we created. It took us maybe more than an hour, hour and a half of photography to do it. But the planning was important. We have here five different groups, grandparents in the middle and four other main groups and they were carefully thought out all on the spot. In other words, I never met these people and suddenly they're in my studio, all of them at one time. So I had to assess which group had how many, which ones were smaller, which ones had little kids. And I decided, which is probably a norm, is to put the patriarch and matriarch in the middle, grandma and grandpa, and then go out from there with the different groups and I placed them based on their uh, group size and their physical size and the color of their hair. And I chose deliberately to put little kids on the end to kind of be the handles of this portrait and kind of make great leading lines. So let me tell you a few things about doing portraits this way. The background on this is my Kelly Beige uh, muslin which is only 12 feet across. So I really couldn't even do this if I had the space in my current studio room, camera room. So what we've done is each family group separately, each group posed unto themselves as a successful arrangement. So you can't be sloppy with anybody thinking it's just gonna overlap and we're just gonna have a run on sentence. No, what we needed to do was create a great image of each family group, which was, and oftentimes here it was five, four and five people. And proper arrangement of a family group gives you good spacing, never stacking. Mom is always the most important and she's flattered, okay? And of course, as I said, we put the grandparents in the middle. One of the key things though that we did was the very first image, including the grandparents and the one younger adopted daughter was intermixed with another family. So what we've done here then, in the middle we have the grandparents and we have the one adopted daughter. And what I did was intentionally put a group that had a couple smaller kids into the very first shot and intermixed their little kids with the grandparents which gives you the illusion that this was all created at one time, but it wasn't. It was done intentionally kind of to fool the mind that this was not five separate groups next to each other. So that intermingling really blended out nicely. When you're doing group photography also, you don't want to have any of the heads on the same horizontal line. You don't want anybody stacked vertically on top of each other. So it becomes an important goal to make sure you have that balance. But on top of that, you have to address 
where everybody's limbs go. All their hands are placed carefully. Everybody's feet are placed carefully where they need to be. And we make sure that everybody has a flattering style, a flattering look. Let's take a look at even a different image. Taking it down to what is not a gigantic group, but I did a family group on location recently of which there's a video on our channel. It's the formal location portrait. It has a family of just seven people in it, but they want it to, very be, to be full length, big and loose. So it has that grandeur of a very large portrait and it was printed very large as well. Uh, it's a big background. It was actually lit on location, but meant to look like studio. So you have those circumstances. This other group I'm going to just take it to is my own family group. Uh, my house, original household. So we have seven kids, spouses, and two or three kids per family. It's a, it's a 40 counter all day long. And now it's like 52 or 53 that it could be if they made me shoot it again but I don't think I'm going to. This was done outside, but nevertheless, it was photographed separately. Every family stood together on their own. They were posed in flattering form and again, favoring mom and knowing that it was going to be blending with uh, another group right next to it. I, I feel it's extremely successful, but it comes from pre-planning knowing what your backgrounds are going to look like. You know, you can't have the same tree repeat over and over and over again, like I did in this particular indoor portrait I just did. If you take another look, if we take another look at it, you'll see that I used one blonde or oak stool to build each group on. But that same stool is in the image five times, but nobody's gonna be aware that I don't own five of those stools. So anyway, this would be considered a difficult assignment. So let me just speak to this though. There are a lot of compositing uh, aspects to it. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are really, really, really good at doing dynamic composites and they can put together big groups. They do basketball teams and they, they put in all kinds of crazy fancy backgrounds and they're very, they're awesome and they win awards. But what we're trying to do here in this studio and maybe in yours, if you are a portrait photographer, is employ great portrait techniques, which is the lighting and posing that takes a lifetime to figure out and master and then marry it with really great Photoshop techniques to ultimately create something that is invisible. Uh, there's been many times over the last week or two that I, from when I created this image and sold it and now have made the canvas of it where people have seen it, other photographers, other people that work here and that kind of thing. And everybody remarked that it's impossible to have that many people look that good at one time. And yes, Maybe it isn't possible, but this is one way to accomplish it. I will, I will close in telling you that this client, when they came in for the reveal, again, I'm not gonna show them proofs and have them pick out what they want in it. I did it all for them in advance and it probably took me, you know, 10 hours uh, of retouching and assembly to make this happen. During the reveal, I essentially showed them one image and that one image was this finished group. So uh, while they bought that and bought a big canvas of it, I also already from doing this had all the subfamilies built and retouched and ready to purchase as well. So this is another side to the grand family assignment, which you could scare you to death, but it's doable. So I would sell a very large canvas and then sell one or multiple images to every other family. So hopefully you found this entertaining and helpful. It is completely real. This is what has happened in my studio this week or two. 
and it reminded me that I should share it because I've done it before. So anyway, I certainly thank you for being with us today, and we're glad you're um, subscribed to Master Photo Techniques, and we'd love to keep bringing you more and more lessons and commentary as we move forward. Thanks again for being with us.